Hello students, this is Miss Mangrum's Guide to Relationships with Books. Let's talk a little bit about why independent reading matters. Looking at this chart, you can see that there are three students. Student A reads 20 minutes a day. Student B reads five minutes each day, and student C only reads one minute each day. As you can see, by the end of the school year, student A has read a lot more books and a lot more words than student B or C. So by the end of the school year, student A will have read the equivalent of 60 whole school days. Student B will have read only 12 school days. And student C really hasn't even made it on the board. So think about which one, A, B, or C, is going to be more successful in school, have a better vocabulary, and be able to uh, have better options as they get older. That's right, student A. Student A is what we're going for. Let's talk about real reading versus fake reading. Now looking at that chart, you can see that there are two different kinds of reading. A lot of times students think that they're reading, doing real reading, when they're really doing fake reading. Real reading involves staying focused, thinking about the reading, uh, being involved in what's happening in the story. Uh, there's a silent stillness to it. The reading's at a steady pace. Fake reading, on the other hand, uh, involves a lot of pretending to be reading, but not actually paying attention. Just because your eyes are moving across the page doesn't mean you're paying attention. Now, one thing that's not on the fake reading side that I would add for your homework reading is the idea of technology being on. So having the TV on, the computer on, uh, checking your phone, all of that is going to have the consequence of fake reading. You cannot watch TV and read at the same time. Now, I know you're gonna tell me that you can, you're that one student who can do it, but really you can't. Turn off the television or go to another room, find a quiet place to read, put the phone down and turn off the computer. That will help you to focus on your reading. If you get done reading and you have no idea what you actually read, you can't tell anyone what those pages were about, you didn't really read. That's fake reading. I want you to do real reading. All right, so your independent reading requirements for this class. All right, I expect you to read at least 20 pages outside of class on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Now, honor students, you are expected to read 100 pages per week. So you have a higher requirement, but that's because you're honors. I expect you to record your reading on your reading log. Um, you also need to pass your accelerated reader quizzes in class, and you should be taking AR quizzes at least every two weeks. You should be regularly finishing books. Points earned above your goal are extra credit. So now you don't have to ask me, is there extra credit? There it is. Read. Go above your AR goal. It's extra credit. So what this means is that you are responsible for having an independent reading book. When you are close to finishing a book, get your next book. It drives me crazy when students come to class and say, I finished my book on Tuesday, so I didn't do my reading log on Wednesday or Thursday. That's not acceptable. You are too old to give me that excuse. You need to get a new book if you finish a book in the middle of the week. It's also not okay to tell me I never got a book, therefore I didn't do my reading. You are responsible for having an independent reading book. There are plenty of resources. You can go to my classroom library, you can go to the school library, you can go to the public library. If you can't find books that you like, come talk to me. I've got 15 years of books all stored in my head. I can come up with all kinds of great book ideas. Also, there's a list on my website of great books as well. Now let's talk about dating. 
I know, you can't believe I'm going to talk about that, but let's talk about dating when it comes to dating a book. Think about what you want to read. What are you interested in? Find out what's out there to read. See if a friend's got a recommendation. Um, there's also the list on my class website. Go beyond looks. That's just the cover. Read the book blurb. Actually read what the book is going to be about. The book blurb's on the back or the inside cover. And then if that seems interesting, read the first pages. If you just pick a book based on the cover, that's like asking someone to go to the movies with you because you like their hair. You never actually talk to them. You don't know if they're interesting. You don't know if you have anything in common. That's not going to work out well as a good date. So when you're dating a book, actually spend a little time finding out what the book's about. Number four says give it 20 pages. Consider that like a first date. Some students read the first three or four pages and then drop a book. But I will encourage them, no, 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 give it 20 pages. And then about 15 pages in, they're hooked. So give it at least 20 pages before you decide to um, continue or break up. Okay. Number five, maintain the relationship with regular reading. If you're interested in the book, we'll read it on a regular basis then. Number six, break up if it's not working out. You do not have to keep reading a book if you don't like it. So if it's not working out, just tell the book, you know what, I just feel like we need to see other people. You know, I don't want to hold you back from someone who's really going to appreciate you as a book. Um, tell the book, um, you know, it's not you, it's me. I'm just going through a lot right now, so I just need to be free. And then go find a new book. Okay, number seven, don't commit to one book for life. I have students who will spend an entire month reading the Magic Treehouse book. Um, that's not okay. You're not really committed to that book. You're just pretending like it. In fact, you're kind of acting like you're married to that book. Well, you're too young to get married, especially to a book. So, you know, finish a book, move on. Appreciate it for what it was. Number eight, don't just flirt with books. A lot of you do this. When you walk into my classroom, you grab a book, random, any old book off of my shelf, and you pretend like you read it in class, and then you dump it before you walk out of the classroom. That is so not okay to do to my books. That book deserves better than you. So treat my books well. Don't be a book flirt. Number nine, go outside the box. Try a variety of genres. Try different books. Um, you may think, no, I only like to read science fiction, or I only like to read about skateboarding. There's other books out there. You'd be surprised, you know. Try some different books. I want you to read, 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 because the more you read, the better you become at reading and writing. So we're going to do a whole bunch of reading. You guys are going to just read, and you're going to improve in your reading. Let's get to reading.